For what shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You might have seen this verse somewhere lately in a music video, but whatever reason you're here, it's not an accident. There are no accidents. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what this verse actually means. We'll get into the context and how we can apply it in our lives. So if you're up for that, then stay tuned. Hello friends and family! If it's your first time here, my name is Hannah and welcome to the channel! So first, let's talk about the context. This verse was said during the time that Jesus was explaining about his death and resurrection to the disciples. A little bit earlier in the verses, whether you're reading from the account in Mark or in Matthew, you will see that Peter rebuked Jesus because he didn't want Jesus to die. I don't know what Peter was thinking. Maybe he would be helping Jesus protect him. Because of that, Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. He wasn't necessarily saying this to Peter himself, but he knew that the devil was working through Peter so that he would be discouraged to do God's plan for him on earth. At this point, we may know that it is to die for our sins. And then later on, Jesus said this, For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. There was also a time where Jesus himself experienced temptation from Satan. You can look at Luke 5-8 for this. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. And of course, Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And so Jesus himself was tempted in this same aspect. He was going to be given the whole world by the devil because at that moment, the devil knew that this world was his. Technically until now. But Jesus resisted the devil. Now let's go back to our verse and see how it can apply to us. So let's go to this first part. For what shall it profit a man? And if I'm going to interpret it in my own words, I'll say, What use is there for us? if he shall gain the whole world. And when we talk about the whole world here, it talks about earthly riches, the fame, money, whatever thing on earth that we might value. Yet, it says in this next part, and lose his own soul. Losing one's own soul means being outside the obedience of God. That means we don't want to follow God. Earlier, we just read the verse in Matthew 16, verse 26. And I want to continue that with verse 27. All right, here. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. So let me just clarify that this verse is not talking about our salvation, but it's talking about the rewards that Jesus will give to us once he has come back to the earth to pick us up. And I relate that to the verse that we just read. What did we invest our time on while we were here on earth? What are the things that drive us toward the choices that we make in life? Is it position, our reputation, and how people look at us? Maybe wanting to please your parents? There are three things that I want us to remember for you to be encouraged when it comes to this aspect. One is to remove your gaze from the temporal. When I say temporal, those are the things that don't last. The things that only remain here on earth. I'm reminded of King Solomon. He was the wisest person on earth. There was a time in his life that he tried everything. He tried women, he tried drinking, he tried having a lot of money, which he already had. He had power, he had all the things that a man would like to have. Yet, he said that everything is meaningless. And later on in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13, he says this, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And I'll continue on. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. What are the things that really matter in life? Would it be these things that we can see right now? Or is it the things that are eternal? And that goes to my second point. Fix your eyes on the eternal. We can go to Colossians 3 verse 2. It says, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. This chapter, this whole 
passage is great. I actually want to read verse 12 of that chapter. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. What are the things that we focus on? We hear this term a lot, self-love. At a point, we do have to have confidence in ourselves. But the more important part is knowing that we can be confident in the God who created us, in the God who gave us all the abilities that we have. And in turn, we can use whatever abilities we have in service to God. Doesn't mean that we have to be in church all the time, but it's in serving other people. It's in dedicating whatever we have and whatever we do for the Lord. And then I have another encouragement for all of us. Also enjoy God's blessings things and be content. So we had two extremes earlier. We had remove our gaze from the temporal and also fix our eyes on the eternal. But does that mean that we can't enjoy what we have now? No, it doesn't. We can go back again to Ecclesiastes, but this time in chapter 9. In verses 7 to 10, it says this, Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. So if the point here is that if we have good things, we can enjoy them. If you can afford certain things, if you can go on a trip, those are things that you can enjoy as well. But may we not have a very strong grip on them. Instead, let's have a loose grip. If the Lord allows us to have these things, then they are blessings from the Lord. Then again, let's not center our whole lives on these things. At this moment of filming, I am reminded that it's September and it's Suicide Awareness Month. And maybe this verse that we just talked about and expounded on made you think. Know that there is a God who loves you and there may be a lot of things that are happening in your life right now that aren't the best. Maybe they are depressing, they're pulling you down. I've been there and maybe a lot of us have, especially in the year 2020 know that we have a hope and we have a future in Jesus. Come to Him because there is joy and there is peace from Him that we may not understand. It is good news for all of us. And if you want to hear about that, then go ahead and click on this video. If this has blessed you, please hit that like button. It helps this channel a lot and it spreads this message to even more people. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Our hope and future is in Jesus. See you in the next video.